Hey guys, so I'm a, I think I'm a day late telling you guys the story. <sighs> and I've just been really tired and I look tired and I look horrible. Like I'm looking at myself on the screen and I'm like, ugh, girl. But um, <clears throat> I'm just going to go ahead and adjust my wig. <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys about my homeless story because everybody's homeless story is different mine is not maybe conventional so basically what happened is that my mom sold my house and her house from underneath us and a lot of the information I got is secondhand so she basically I guess was in a depression I don't know what she was going through I, I I don't I don't know why she just stopped paying the house note I did not even know there was still a house note on my house um I'm not going to get too much into it because I have filed um, a complaint and there's some you know legal stuff going on so I won't get too much into that but not needless to say um She sold the house. Well, she's, she told me one day, she said, um, I don't remember her words verbatim, but she was saying that she was needing help or the houses were going into foreclosure. And I remember telling her, okay, well, mom, you know, let me see what I can do. Let me, let me see what I can do. And then I'll get back to you. And she was like, oh, no, no, no. I've already got it handled. And I was like, okay. And I don't remember if it was two, three days later. It was really quick. She was like, yeah, I sold the houses. And I was like, because she sold the house that I grew up in, my grandparents' home. The house that I was living in, we had acquired from a lady that we, well, I will say we, but generally it was my mom and my grandmother. And well, and my grandfather, they took care of this lady. Um, her husband had passed. She didn't really have any family. And so we took care of her for years and years and years. You know, we made sure she had her breakfast, her lunch, her dinner. And I'm saying we, but, you know, I was a kid then. You know, I was like in elementary school. So it really was not me. But, you know, um, it was mostly my grandmother and my mom. And I remember going with them. Now, I do remember that. Even at night, we would... You know, after her dinner, we would go back down and make sure everything was locked up. And I would go down with my grandmother and my mom. And <sighs> yeah. So anyway, that's the house I was in. And my mom was still in the house I grew up in. And I don't know. I found out that she had just stopped paying on the house in January. And I don't know... I don't know. I, I just don't know. And I, I'm, um, I don't know if I've even said too much so far, but I don't want to talk about that part anymore. Needless to say, she went to her boyfriend's or now his daughter does not, she does not consider my mom and her dad boyfriend or girlfriend. Okay. It's a, it's a, to me it's semantics. It's semantics. Um, it's semantics, but whatever they, they're close there. Even if they're just good friends, how good of a friend, you know, she sold it to them and then they wanted this out, you know, this price for the house that I'm, it's not their home. You know, I, my grand, I moved into this house before my grandmother passed away. It was after my grandfather passed but before my grandmother passed and she never told me or asked me for rent. All I had, I had to pay the utilities. Of course, I had to put the utilities in my name. She wasn't going to do that. Granny was not that giving, but you know, that was fine. I paid the utilities. Were they always on time? No, but she never had to worry about that. Um, they weren't ever turned off. And... You know, I had been in that house since I, I was still pregnant with my son. I gave birth to my son and came back to this house. My son is now nine. 
So I've been in this home for a long time. Um, I will tell you guys that I try to go to my mom's. She she called and asked if we need to do laundry and I was like, yeah, and she had cooked spaghetti and we took the leftovers, but I just couldn't sit there because what she did is that she, she, when I got there, she was like, oh, I just put a load in, but it won't take long. And I was like, no, I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to elongate this visit, but you're, you want to pretend like everything's okay. Like everything's the same and no. And what I will say to you guys is that my mom has done things before. Like after my grandfather passed, after my, especially after my grandmother passed, my, I, I, I was treated like shit. And luckily I'm able to compartmentalize. There's a lot of stuff that I keep hidden, or I don't want to say I keep hidden, but I I don't talk about, <clears throat> and I don't allow myself to think about. But she's done things to me my whole life, and I've just kind of, I guess, let it slide. But this is, this no, this changed this has changed everything and I don't know that we'll ever come back from this. Needless to say that I um was homeless. Now, granted I was only homeless for about a week. But just as of yesterday I found out I might be homeless again because HUD, my caseworker, didn't do her job. She and I specifically asked her, can we be in the two bedroom? Cause she said, oh, there's a two bedroom available. And I said, well, can we be in a two bedroom? Because you know, my son's age and my daughter's age, I, I don't know a lot about this system, but I, I do know a little bit, you know, I've never had to go through it like this before, but she told me, yes, yeah, fine, you know, your son can stay on the couch, or you can stay on the couch, or he can be in your room, your daughter can be in her room. And as of yesterday, no. As I suspected, we have to be in a three-bedroom. And that means that if there's not one available, we are very close to being kicked right back out. And This whole situation has just been so daunting. I didn't ask for this. And I know I'm skipping over a lot of things and I'm probably leaving stuff out, but um, there's some stuff that I don't wanna get too into because I have put in a complaint and then it goes to a legal department. Even though I didn't take necessarily legal action, um, it there's a legal department within and so I don't wanna say too much, you know, but um, as for me right now, it's just I'm tired and I'm I pray every morning and I pray all throughout the day and I'm concerned because if it was just me that's one thing I could I mean heck I, I'd probably just be on my way to the next city or state but I have children. And in this process, I've learned that <clears throat> there are people who are supposed to be like godparents. And there are people not like godparents. No, they, they claim as themselves to be my godparents. There are people who claim to be really close and there, and that's not true. You know, the first thing that when I tell them, I haven't asked them for anything. Now, granted, I, I haven't asked anybody for anything. If anything, it's hard for me to ask for help. 
I don't like asking people for help of any sort, of any kind. I just, it's a pride thing, and I know that that's not good either, but this is why. The moment that I say something, well, we can't help you. We, we don't have the financial means. I didn't ask you for that. You know, there are more than, there's more than one way to help somebody when they're in distress or in a bad situation. You know, could you, why couldn't you just ask me, do you just need to talk? You know, what, do you need me to come over and help you pack? Do you need me to watch the kids? Do you need, um, I mean, there, there's lots of things that don't involve your finances. I'm not asking you to pay for me a place. I'm not asking that. Can, heck, did you even ask, well, what do you need me to pray for you about? Maybe prayer is the only thing I can give you right now. But is that okay? Can we pray together right now? Can we just talk and pray? I, that would have been excellent because at the time, I just wanted, I wanted to talk, but I didn't want to talk because what do you say? Like, what do you say? And I'm, I don't even know if this video is going to make any sense because I'm kind of here, there, and everywhere, but I'm hurt. Because some of the people that I thought were really in my corner were only here for probably because of my grandparents. Just to be seen and just to be acknowledged and just to save face or whatever. I don't have any standing in the community like that. But the way that you treat me, you don't know what I may have in the future. And I will remember this. Um, yesterday, my caseworker, she thought that, and I remember distinctly asking her, <clears throat> we're in a two-bedroom apartment. It's not bad. It's, an, it's a nice, decent apartment. But I remember asking her, can we be in a two-bedroom because my son is nine and my daughter is 11? And just, I mean, I don't know. I've never been in this situation. and um, But I've, I've heard, and I've, I've heard enough to know that, mm, you know, there's rules and regulations and stipulations. Well, she said, no, it's fine. You know, it's okay. I've signed the lease. But it's not in accordance to HUD. Because... Technically, the leasing officer at that time and my caseworker both knew that I was not, they could not put me in a two bedroom with my two children at their ages and, you know, one being a girl, one being a boy. No, you can't do that. Which is now leading me to be almost homeless again. If there's not a three bedroom. So now I've got to move back out and. Do you think that they're going to help me move? No. But. <sighs> so this is my homeless journey. I'm in Tennessee. I've been told that I make too much. They can't help me, but with maybe 180 to $200 of my rent, if I have a three bedroom, they can help me more with my rent, but other than that, I don't qualify for food stamps because I make too much. Twenty eight thousand, and I do not get food stamps or anything, any additional like any other supplemental income. <clears throat> Even before we were homeless, when I found out, everyone was like, no, you actually have to be homeless on the streets, like living in your car or something. And I was like, 
that's what I'm trying to avoid and I feel so helpless I feel really helpless and I feel like it's my fault I feel like I just feel like it's my fault and that my fear is losing my kids. Fear is being a bad example to them. Today, I took a salary advance. Good thing I did because my battery died on me. Outside of my son's barber shop, and the barber, he made things worse than making it better, and he just didn't care. He didn't care. It was. I just realized I don't have anybody that I can call. Him. I'm alone. So yeah, I know this video was kind of all over the place, but this is just, I don't know what to say. I'll probably say some more tomorrow. I'll probably say it too much in this video. I don't know. It's just, one thing I will say is that the guy that came out to tow my car, I asked him, I said, it's just the battery's dead. Do you mind to just try it? Try to jump start it? And he did, and he was able to refund me, you know, my money. <clears throat> Cause I didn't have it. I just didn't have it, and I. I feel like I'm too old to be going through this. I'm thirty-five. I know that you're not supposed to compare yourself to other people. But I do feel like I'm too old to be going through this. Anyway, I'll um, I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll share you some more of my story.